Welcome back to today's video episode on Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Ego. In today's video lesson, I will be teaching on an aspect under organic chemistry and it is called test for saturation. Now, the test for saturation basically is a procedure used to differentiate between saturated and unsaturated compounds. So this test okay we say it is a test used to differentiate between saturated saturated and unsaturated compounds okay saturated and unsaturated compounds now the point about this reaction or the point about this test for the saturated compounds they are basically alkanes and alkanes are single bonded whereby for the unsaturated compounds they can be alkenes which are double bonded and alkynes which are triple bonded so the point about this test is for test for saturation is a test used to differentiate between saturated compounds which are alkanes that are single bonded with the unsaturated compounds which are can be alkanes or can be alkynes remember alkanes are basically double bonded alkynes are triple bonded and alkanes are uh, hybridization is sp3 for alkenes sp2 and alkynes sp so moving further let's say we are giving an unknown sample now let's say we are giving an unknown sample now we don't know if this sample is an alkane or if this sample is an alkene or an alkyne so let's say this sample is unknown and the sample reacted with bromine water the sample reacted with bromine water what becomes the observation now let's say we observe that the bromine water was decolorized. Let's say the bromine water was decolorized. So here now, bromine water decolorized. So what becomes the inference? Now what becomes our conclusion? It must be noted whenever an unknown sample reacts with bromine water and bromine water was decolorized, it means that there is a presence of an unsaturated compound. This is something you must take note of. When this bromine water is being decolorized, it means that the sample or the unknown sample can be alkene or can be alkyne. So we just say there is presence of the unsaturated compound. So right here, unsaturated compound present. Unsaturated compound present. And this unsaturated compound that is present can be an alkene or can be an alkyne, okay? Alkene or an alkyne. So this is something we must take note of. Whenever the unknown sample reacted with the bromine water and bromine water was decolorized, it means that the inference will be the unsaturated compound basically is present. But the unsaturated compound can be alkene or alkyne, can be double bonded or triple bonded so let's quickly proceed now let's say for example we are still giving this unknown sample and this unknown sample reacted with same bromine water what what will happen here now let's say this unknown sample reacted with bromine water and the bromine water was not decolorized what becomes our inference it means that a saturated compound is present okay it means that a saturated compound is present and this saturated compound basically is the alkane so the point here is this whenever the unknown sample reacts with bromine water and bromine water was not decolorized it means that an unsaturated compound is present and that unsaturated compound is alkane so that is how we differentiate between saturated and unsaturated compound. Now you can see how we can now differentiate between saturated compound 
like the likes of alkane with the unsaturated compounds, which are basically alkenes and alkyne. Now, how do we now differentiate between alkenes and alkyne? How do we differentiate them? Now, we don't differentiate them by this reaction. We differentiate them with other kinds of reaction, which we'll be seeing soon. So it must be noted to differentiate between alkanes, alkenes and alkyne together. So that means to differentiate between saturated and unsaturated compounds, we use bromine water. When bromine water is being decolorized, it means that there's an unsaturated compound present. It can be alkene or an alkyne. But when the bromine water is not decolorized, it means that there's presence of a saturated compound and basically it is alkene. Now let's quickly proceed to the next aspect. Now let's quickly proceed to the next aspect. Now in this concept, we'll be discussing on how to differentiate between alkenes and alkyne. Remember we started with differentiating alkanes from both compounds. Remember alkanes are saturated and both compounds are unsaturated. And we use bromine water to differentiate both of these groups of compounds. But now, how do we now differentiate alkenes from alkyne? Now, the first uh, reaction is by reacting these unsaturated compounds. Because both of them are unsaturated. So we don't know the one present yet. So we are reacting this unsaturated compound with a reagent basically which is ammonica agno3 now what is the name of this compound it is called ammonica silver nitrate so whenever an unsaturated compound reacts with ammonica silver nitrate and we get a white precipitate and we get a white precipitate it tells us that there is a compound present. Remember, an unsaturated compound can be alkene or alkyne. So which of them is actually present whenever this reacts? So whenever we get a white precipitate, it tells us that alkyne is present. That means a compound with triple bond. And which type of alkyne? It must be noted that it is terminal alkyne. Okay, so whenever we see that when the unsaturated compound reacts with ammonica silver nitrate and we get a white precipitate, it tells us that an, a terminal alkyne is present. And what is a terminal al alkyne? A terminal alkyne is an alkyne whereby the triple bond functional group is found at the first position or at the end of the compound. Now, this is what I mean. Now, let's say this is a compound. Um, basically it's an alkyne but in this context it is a terminal alkyne why is it a terminal alkyne because you can see that the functional group is at carbon one or at the end of this compound okay let's say yes the end now yes the yes carbon one so basically at the end uh, we get the terminal alkyne but we have other alkynes like the median alkyne a medial alkyne is an alkyne whereby the alkyne functional group is found at the middle okay at the center of the compound so this is a median alkyne but the point i'm trying to make here is this for the compound or when the compound changes to a white ppt we observe the white ppt it tells us that a terminal alkyne is actually present so that is how we differentiate between alkenes and alkyne take note the inference to be produced is the terminal alkynes and terminal alkynes are alkynes that the functional group is at the first carbon now let's quickly proceed to another reaction now let's proceed to the other reagents we we'll react the unsaturated compound with. Let's say we are reacting the unsaturated compound, the unsaturated compound with ammonica copper chloride. Now let's say we are reacting the unsaturated compound, which can be alkene or alkyne, with ammonica copper chloride. So when we get a reddish, okay, brown precipitate, it tells us that a terminal alkyne is present. This is something we must take note of. And remember, terminal alkynes are alkynes that the functional group is at the first carbon, like the terminal alkyne, the last 
or the functional groups are the, are the, are the, are the first carbon okay so basically if this functional group was here here basically uh, or same the compound is still called a terminal alkyne so a terminal alkyne basically will give a positive test to what now ammonica silver nitrate and ammonica copper chloride and basically for ammonica silver nitrate the observation is that we get a white ppt a white precipitate but for uh, ammonica copper chloride we get a reddish a reddish brown precipitate so now i believe now you now understand the aspect on the test for saturation the first we said how to differentiate between this unsaturated compound from unsaturated compound the saturated compound was the alkane but the unsaturated compound basically was alkene and alkyne so we we'll use bromine water in that case if bromine water is being decolorized that means we have the presence of the unsaturated compound but if the bromine water is not decolorized that means a saturated compound is present now we now went further to talk about how to differentiate between alkenes and alkyne and we used ammonica silver nitrate and ammonica copper chloride for ammonica silver nitrate when we get a white precipitate it means that a terminal alkyne is present and the terminal alkyne basically is an alkyne that the functional group or the functional group, or the triple bond basically is at the first carbon but for a median alkyne a median alkyne cannot give a positive test to this region okay median alkyne is when the functional group is at the uh, the center of the compound as a median alkyne now let's quickly solve this question under this aspect now the question says which of the following will give a white precipitate with ammonica silver nitrate solution now which of the following compounds will give a positive test or will give a white precipitate to this reagent and recall this is also written as AgNO3 which is ammonica silver nitrate and I said earlier that which set of compounds give a positive test to ammonica silver nitrate by uh, making the color become white so recall i said it is terminal alkyne now looking at all of this compound this compound is not even an alkyne it is an alkene because it has a double bond so this can't be the answer now looking at c basically it is an alkyne but if you check the alkyne is at the middle so basically it's called a median alkyne i said median alkyne do not give a positive test to the ammonica silver nitrate solution and also the ammonica copper chloride solution now this is out of it now looking at d d is even an alkane so alkane can't even give a positive test to this region so what is the best answer option b because you can see this compound is an alkyne and the alkyne is at the first carbon so basically this is a terminal alkyne so this becomes the answer because it is the only terminal our kind so basically i believe now you now understand the concept under the test for saturation and how to solve problems under this aspect if you like this video do well to hit the subscribe button and also share my videos to friends thank you very much and god bless you all